Sleepless drunk. I love video game music, but I don't love bad video games, call me crazy, but I thought it'd be fun to take a look at some Super Nintendo games that aren't really worth playing today, but they still feature some great tunes. The way this video is going to work is I'll talk briefly about the game, then I'll let some of the soundtrack play so you can hear it for yourself, just as kind of a fun exercise, and I'll give credit to the musicians that worked on this music as well. If you're looking for individual timestamps and track names, check the description. One perfect example of a bad game with great music is J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings Volume 1, and yes, unfortunately, this game pretty much sucks. The game does get off to a nice start following the story nicely and introducing all the characters many of you are familiar with, but the dungeon design is bad, it's really easy to get lost, the mazes are gigantic and seemingly endless, everything is really dark, your attack sucks, and the game is just really, really boring. But thankfully, the music holds up its end of the bargain. Credit goes to Charles Deneen for the soundtrack, who helped out with other SNES games like Clay Fighter and Lost Vikings. Listen for yourself. Next we've got Tecmo Secret of the Stars, and this game just kinda makes me sad. It seriously looks like it belongs on the NES even though this was released for Super Nintendo in 1995. It's a turn-based role-playing game that's way too grind-heavy, has a terrible translation, and it doesn't have much to offer that you can't find in other, better games. But thankfully the music is well done, composed by Takushi Sasuke, and it's probably the only thing this game has going for it.
King Arthur and the Knights of Justice is a game based off of a cartoon of the same name made in 1995 and it's published by Annex, so you think this game might be good and you'd be wrong. This is one of those games that looks like it should be good, but it's one of the least intuitive games I can remember playing. You just wander around and around and around, with the game barely giving you a hint as to what to do or where to go, and if you are able to figure that out, it's just a series of boring, tedious fetch quests. Again, this is another game where you're much better off playing any other top-down adventure game other than maybe Lord of the Rings, but hey, at least the music is pretty good. It's composed by Robert Ridialg, who later went on to help out with music and audio for the Forza and Halo series, so it's kind of cool to hear his early work here. Now let's get really obscure. There are dozens and dozens of Pachinko and Mahjong games on Super Famicom that never left Japan, and none of them are in English. So as you can clearly see from the footage here, I don't really know what I'm doing, but thankfully there's some really good music in some of these games. What I'm playing here is called Kindai Mahjong Special, and it's got some of the most chill music I've found in the entire SNES library. The music is credited to Outback Sound Team, and this is one of those soundtracks I put on just to relax while I'm working on something. Seriously, if you're looking for a great source of chill Super Nintendo music, just seek out music from a Mahjong game. Here's another game called Mahjong Hishoda Naki no Ryu, with music composed by the IGS sound team.
Sticking with games that never left Japan, here's a game called GD Lean. This one was actually supposed to be localized, and it was mentioned a couple times in Nintendo Power, and it's credited as the first RPG on the system. But the game itself is not good. It's very dry, very grind-heavy, and very boring. It's one of those games where after all these years, it still does not have a fan-made English patch because it's just not a very good game. But the music is pretty good, some of it even has kind of a Castlevania vibe, and it was composed by Yu Ohama, Toshimichi Aiso, Masakuzu Anai, and Hitoshi Sakimoto. Next there's Lagoon, and I hesitate to call this a bad game, it's just more of an annoying one. You fight monsters with what looks like a plastic spork so your attack range is lousy, your magic automatically gets turned off for boss fights for some reason, and the game in general is just kind of a confusing mess. But there's no doubt that the music in this game is awesome, not just with the chill music in Villages, but dungeon and boss themes as well. Credit to Go Saido and Masai Sakaide. Last, but definitely not least, there's Waterworld, and longtime viewers may know this soundtrack just from this song. It's the first track on the first big three-hour Super Nintendo music compilation I posted on this channel, and while the game isn't very good, the soundtrack composed by Dean Evans is outstanding. It's seriously some of the best music of the 16-bit era, and now I'm just gonna get out of the way so you can listen. So I want to thank you for watching and listening, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.